Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you this morning? You're good? Tired? You look tired. <laughs> um, this morning, we'll be talking about something really important. This is not in your schedule, but then um, we are impressed to tell you this ahead of time. This topic is quite important, and this may be a sort of, you know, a new thing for you, maybe. Maybe some of you have um, discovered this already, but this one will probably um, encourage or would challenge you after this um, session. Now, before I start, I would love um, to ask Kuya Matthew to pray for me before we start here. Kuya Matthew, can you, can you pray for me? Here in, on the top, I would be very, very blessed if someone would pray for me before I start. Kuya Matthew will be the best guy for that. There's a microphone. Let's pray all together. Can we stand? And we'll ask Kuya Matthew to pray for us. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, you have impressed us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, to give this message this morning, this most important message about present truth. And all we ask, Lord, is for your Holy Spirit, not just to be here in this place, but to be in every single heart in here, Lord, to open our minds and to get us to understand your truth. And Lord, we also ask for a special blessing for our speaker, Amen. for Sir Jasper, Lord. May you hide him and show you. Lord, you must increase, he must decrease. Amen. May his words be your words. And Lord, may the message be of truth and nothing but the truth. Mm. Lord, please bless us today, each one of us in here. And we thank you for your leading in Pathco and in the message this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Now, this morning, we'll be ta talking about something that is really, really important. You may not be seated. Um, the title of our topic this morning is Music and the Battle for Your Soul. This is a two-part series of um, an interesting topic. So I'm pretty sure that after this, you will have a little bit understanding of how heavenly music looks like and how the devil's music looks like. Now... Before I start, who among you here were here last Sabbath? Yesterday? Here in this church? During Kuyamat's sermon? He was talking about the sword, right? Uh, before we start and talk about that sword, I want to start with giving you these two types of person, okay? We call them the butcher and the physician. The butcher and the physician. The butcher and the what? The physician. Now let me ask you this question. What do you think is the similarity between a butcher and a physician? They both have knives. They cut flesh, right? Now, what do you think is the difference between them? Yeah, some use it, some, the butcher uses his knives to kill, and the physician uses his knives to heal. And I'm pretty sure that when God came, Jesus Christ came in in flesh, when he came here in this earth, he actually brought a sword, right? And I'm pretty sure that that sword is not a butcher's sword to kill. That, that sword is used to heal people, amen? But then let me ask you, do you think that when you have an, an open heart surgery, do you think it's, it's a pleasant um, you know, process? No, right? It's hard. Create in me a clean heart. He was actually asking the Lord, give me a, a spiritual surgery within my heart but then it's not a pleasant experience and i'm pretty sure this morning that this one will not be a pleasant experience this one will will probably hurt you a little bit but then ellen white said every watchword of every christian must be something better amen when god takes away something he replaces it with something better when God takes away an unclean heart, He replaces it with a clean heart. Amen? So this morning, this might hurt you, but this will give you a clean heart. Amen? Amen. I hope you are 
um, clinging on to that promise. Let me start this um, lecture with a quotation here. Oops, looks like my, my clicker is not working. Let me try it again. Okay, there we go. Ellen White said, Selected Messages, Volume 1, page 133. She said, The time is altogether too, too full of the, the tokens of the coming conflict to be educating the youth in fun in games. Now, I'm pretty sure that Ellen White wrote this because soon enough, our church will come into the situation where we will be entertaining our young people with fun and games. Then she warned us that the time is altogether too full of the coming conflicts. What she is saying is God is really coming and there is a crisis that is coming. And let us stop educating our young people and, and with fun and games, with entertainment. Now is the time to make them ready. Amen? So my appeal to you this time is that I'm not going to entertain you. I'm going to give you a certain message that will probably educate you on the truth about music. Now I want you to pay attention. There's a quotation here from Francis Chan. He said, the entertainment model of church was largely adopted in the 80s and 90s. And while it alleviated some of our boredom for a couple of hours a week, it filled our churches with self-focused consumers rather than self-sacrificing servants attuned to the Holy Spirit. Now you know how heavy the magnitude of what he's, he's saying? He said our church right now is filled with entertainment. And he said, yes, it will alleviate some of the boredom in our AYF. But then it become a house, our church becomes a house of people that are self-centered. They want to go to church because they want to be entertained, not to worship God. Now let me tell you this, my friends. Our church is not built for entertainment. Amen? It is built, built for worship. If you want to, enter, to entertain yourself, go to SM. Go to some malls. Go to some movie houses. That, is, that house is built for entertainment. But the house of God is not built for entertainment at all. It is built for worship. And right now, our church, basically, I don't know if you've noticed, you go to different, I'm not judging any churches. But then this is the majority of our churches today. Majority of our church right now is filled with entertaining AY program. Where we can have games and and entertaining songs. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying our AY should be boring, but then our AY now is focused on entertaining the young people rather than educating about the truth. Can someone please say amen? Amen, thank you. But then the pro there is a problem right now, my friends. And look at this, this is a quotation from Ellen White, education page 271. Ellen White said, with such an army of workers as our youth rightly trained, what's the word? Rightly trained might furnish how soon the message of a crucified, risen, and soon coming Savior might be carried to the whole world. How soon might the end come? Ellen White said, if our young people are rightly trained, then the end will come. But the end will not come if our young people are not right, rightly trained. And let me give you a bold statement here. Entertainment will not Get ready, our young people. Will not bring them to the foot of the cross. And that's why we are here not to entertain you, but to give you the right education about music. Now, the great controversy, page 516. I want to start with this. Ellen White said, let's read it all together. There is nothing that the great deceiver, deceiver fears so much as that we shall become acquainted with his what? Devices. So Satan is afraid when we are familiar on the things that he is using to attack the remnant church. Are you following so far? So we must have the idea of the, an understanding of what are the tools that Satan is using to attack us, to divert our minds away from the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, right? Because our mind should be attuned to that holy place, to that most holy place. Now, let me start my lecture with some of the quotation from, from maybe one of the most famous guys in history. But before that, let me start with this. I'm not a singer. I don't know how to sing. That's one of my problems. I wanted to sing, but I'm bad at it. But then, 
this time, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you an assurance that I will not be singing. I will not be singing. But I'll be giving you the right idea of how music should look like, okay? And how Satan is using music to divert our course. Now, let me start with a quotation here. Who may hear knows Confucius? Oh, uh, yeah, you've heard about it. Confucius said, Do you wish to know if a kingdom is well governed? If the morals of its inhabitants are good or bad? Look at the music that is current there. So if you want to know if the inhabitants of the, 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 the country is bad or the nation or the town is good or bad, you don't need to look at the mayor and ask him. You don't need to look at the, 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 the governor and ask him. All you need to do is listen to the music that they're playing. And you can cl conclude what is the moral of that country. Now let me ask you, if Confucius is alive today, and he, co he comes to your iPod or your MP3 player, and he's try he, he tried to listen to your music, do you think he could conclude that you have a good moral? Now don't answer me. But then Confucius knows that when the music is bad, the morals is bad. Now, there's more. Napoleon says this, give me control over he who shapes the music of a nation, and I care not who makes the laws. This is how powerful music is, my friends. He doesn't care how, who, who makes the law. All he, need, he wanted is those who makes music. Because when he knows that when he, he controls the music, he can control the mind of the people who listens to that music. There's more there, here. How many here have heard about the Beatles? Okay, the Beatles says this. Our music is capable of causing emotional instability, disorganized behavior, rebellion, and even revolution. Wow. This is how powerful music is, my friends. And you know how, you know how mild the music of the Beatles are, right? It's so mild music. But then look at the, the effects of it. They said, we can produce a revolution out of our music. And we're talking about mild music here, my friends. This is how powerful music is. Now, there's a philosopher named Boitus. He said, music can both establish and destroy morality. For no path is more open to the soul for the form formation thereof than through the what? The ears. There's no open um, source that Satan can come in. Open way that Satan can come in, except for your ears. It says here, Therefore, when the rhythms and modes have penetrated even to the soul through these organs, it cannot be doubted that they affect the soul with their own character and conform it to themselves. When music is trying to come into you, my friends, there's a chance that that thing will mold your character. This is what this guy is saying. Now, there was another guy by the name of Aristotle. Aristotle says this, if a person habitually listens to the kind of music that arouses ignoble passions, his whole character will be shaped to an ignoble form. This is how powerful music is. If you are listening to a corrupt kind of music, your character will be corrupt. Now, what you don't understand, Papco students, you know why we're doing this lecture? Because there is power in music. This is how powerful music is. If you listen to the wrong type of music, your character will become a wrong type of character. I hope you're understanding. There's more to this. Emotions of any kind are produced by melody and rhythm. Therefore, by music, a man becomes accustomed to feeling the right emotions. Now, I want you to notice this. He said, music has thus the power to form character. Music has the power to form character. It says here, in short, if one listens to the wrong kind of music, he will become the wrong kind of person. Now, let me ask you, my friends, Papco students, what kind of music are you listening to? If you're listening to the wrong kind of music, you're, you're, you will become the wrong kind of person. But conversely, if he listens to the right kind of music, he will tend to become the right kind of person. Amen? If you listen to the wrong type of music, you'll become a wrong type, kind of person. 
But then if you listen to the right kind of music, you will probably end up the right person. This is how powerful it is, my friend. Now, according to science, I want you to notice what science said. Manfred Climes on music and healing. He's a professor. He said, music, in fact, is an organization created to dictate feeling to the listener. So music is what? Dictating. Now, I want you to notice this. The composer is an unrelenting dictator. I don't know if you understand. The guy who makes music is actually a dictator. It dictates you. Now, I want you to notice. I'll, I'll prove to you later on. And we choose to subject ourselves to him when we listen to his music. Now, I want you to notice this. This is powerful, my friends. Because this doctor said that the music director is, can be a dictator. It can dictate you. Now, I want you to notice. I don't know if you notice right now if the genre of music is changing. Look at the fashion. Look at the cloth clothing wear. What happens? It changes too. Are you following? When the modes of music is changing, the clothing wear is also changing. This is why musicians are dictators. Now, I want you to notice this. Look at this. Every time the music changes, the genre of music changes, the fashion actually changes. I don't know if you've noticed this, right? Our young people, look at them. And especially when they are listening to hip hop, their clothing will become hip hop. Listen to rock music, they, they want to be to act like a rock star. Look at these pictures. You know, the Korean popular music came into the show to the Philippines and all the Filipinos, majority of them wanted to be Koreans. Are you following? That's why music is a dictator. Are you following? This is not ordinary, my friends. We are delivering this to your mind because we want you to understand that the Philippines right now are Filipinos, not Koreans, but they, they wanted to be Koreans because of the music that they listen to. Are you following so far? This is how important it is. Look at this. This is like they call it swag. And now when the swag came into the show, all people, majority of our young people, wanted to be swaggers. This is how powerful it is, my friends. That's why I want you to know this. this Plato said, in order to take the spiritual temper temperature of an individual or society, one must mark the music. Now, Plato says this. I did not say this. What, in the essence, in the essence, what Plato is saying is this. I could, I could listen to your iPod, your MP3, and listen to the music that you're listening to, and I, I, will, I can conclude if you're a spiritual person or not, just listening to your music. Now, let me ask you, if Plato is here, can he conclude that you're a good Christian? Can he conclude that you are a genuine Christian. Now he said that. I did not say that, just expanding the whole thing. He says here, the introduction of a new kind of music must be shunned as imperiling the whole state. Now, he said, this is on his time. The music that is brought into his time, in the ancient time, is imperiling the state. The new kind of music, he said this. Um, since style of music are never disturbed without affecting the most important political institutions, our music was once divided into its proper form. You see, music before is divided in its proper form. There were no whistles on musical mob noises or clapping for applause. He says this, but later a musical anarchy was led by poets who had natural talent but were ignorant of the laws of music. Now I want you to notice, very important, through foolishness, they deceived themselves into thinking that there, way, there was no right or wrong way in music. Right now, people are like, there's no right or, way or, or right or wrong in music. Okay? It says here that it was to be judged good or bad by the pleasure it gave. In the essence, what this guy is saying is that majority, even right now, and in the, his time, Plato said, Today, people are judging music not because 
of what it is. It is described on what pleasure it gave to the people. Now, this is a, Plato is saying some significance here. By their works and their theories, they infected the masses with the presumption to think themselves adequate judges. People right now, they think that they can judge what is right and wrong in terms of music. Hmm. Let me give you how important music and how powerful music is. There is a story here, but let me read this to you. First Samuel 16.23 Saul was having demon possession and he had some problem. But then you look at what, what the Bible said. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took a an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was what? Refreshed and was well and the evil spirit departed from him. Because of the music that was given to Saul, the evil spirit went out of him. Now, if music can be used for good, do you think that music can be used for bad? Of course, right? If Ellen White said, if there is a genuine, Satan will do a counterfeit out of it. Now, let me skip that a little bit. Let me read to you from science. You know, this is scientific now. Dr. Adam, I don't know how to pronounce that, but let's read it all together. A musicologist noted, it is really a powerful drug. Music is a powerful drug. Music can poison you, lift your spirits, or make you sick without knowing why. Wow, this is science speaking. Music is used everywhere to condition the human mind. It can be just as powerful as a drug and much more dangerous because nobody takes musical manipulation very seriously. Music is like a drug. Hmm. It goes on to say, Montreal Neurological Institute found that music recruits neural system of reward and emotion similar to those that are artificially activated by drugs of abuse. Music can be related to drug addiction. Now I want you to notice, if you preach this to most of our young people, the hardest thing that will take, they will take out away from themselves is music. Because music is so addictive. I want you to always realize that, my friends. Look at this. This is how powerful music is. How old must a baby be to move rhythmically to music? This is a research from Baby Born to Dance by Marcel Zentner. How old do you think a baby, well, when he can dance, who dance? Any guess? Yeah, how old? Did you know that a baby could dance even when he is five months old? Music is never neutral, my friends, amen? Music can affect everyone, even a five-month-old baby. Now, I want you to notice, this is very, very important. I don't know if you have, this is just a short lecture of music, but I recommend you watching Christian Berdahl's Destruction Dilemma. That's a 10-part series. This is a 10-hour sermon about music. Now, I want you to notice this. I got some points out of those lectures, but I want you to notice, very, very important. There was this guy by the name of Masaru Emoto. Masaru Emoto was one of the more, you know, He's not that popular scientist, but he is used to, to study ice crystals, okay? Now, he is interested on studying, what do you want to do? I mean, let me explain to you what he's doing. He would take um, a, par a, a, a portion of, of water, and he would put it on a microscope, okay, on a desk, and they put it on, on a microscope, and then he freezes it. While he is freezing it, he would play a background music. And it would create something really, really fascinating. This was created by musical tones, you see? Look at that. This is the symmetry. This was created by music. Now, I want you to notice, one of his study is this. There was, there was this thing while he was freezing it. And this actually was created by a musical song. You know what music it is? Okay, I want you to notice this. Look at, look at the cemeteries. Very, very... This was created by Bach. Okay, that cemetery. While the music is playing, 
the water is freezing and it created a symmetry like this. Look, it's really fascinating. Now, let me skip that. That's Aaron G. by back. Look at this. Amazing Grace. Look at, look at the symmetry. Now, I want you to notice, and again, look at that one. What do you think, what kind of music do you think made that one? Now, oh, very fascinating. Look at this one. This was... Well, since my baby left me, this was Heartbreak Hotel by Elvis Presley. Look at this. It's a bit destroyed already. Now, this is important. I want you to notice this. Look at that one. It's pretty messed up, right? I want you to notice. This was created by this. Look at how messed up the water is. You don't need to study rocket science to understand this, my friends. Our brain is how many percent water? 70 to 80 percent, some say. But if our brain is that mass of a water, do you think our brain is affected? Our body is how many percent water? 75, 70, 80 percent. But then if our body is, is 75 percent water, do you think our body is affected by this music? My friends, your kids will be affected. Your body will be affected. Your judgment is not sound anymore. That's why when I see sales lady, when I go to, to the streets of Iloilo, I would see all oh, these people, they put their ears near the speaker. And they don't know what's the, 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 eff the effect of music, the sound on their system, on their body. This is very, very dangerous. Now, I want you to notice, selected, second selected messages, page 36 to 38, Satan will make music a snare by the way in which it is conducted. Okay? Now, I want you to notice, very, very important. Now, I'll be showing you a video of maybe this will become our jump board on our theme right now. This is a video about a Filipina singing something, very famous Filipina international artist. I'm pretty sure you know her. Her name is Cherise. I don't know if you know her. Then she had a song. I don't know. I forgot the title of our, uh, of our song. But then this song will give us an understanding on how our theme should look like later on. Okay? I want you to know this. But before that, I want to pray before we proceed. Father in heaven will be listening to this, to the worldly music that the world is offering. And then, Father, as we study, help us to still have the right mind and help us to discern spiritual things and help, help us to discern righteousness and between um, evil things. So please, Lord, help us to discern well. Forgive us, Lord, from all the things you committed against you and help us to focus this very time. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I want you to notice this song and I want you to, to ponder upon the lyrics. Ellen White said, Satan will use music a snare on the way it, in which it is conducted. Music is not evil. Amen? But Ellen White is giving us a warning on the way it is conducted. I want you to notice. Look at your eyes. Now, I want you to feel yourselves right now. You feel really sleepy. Okay? Look at you. You're really, really tired and sleepy. But after I play this, I want you to feel yourself. Okay? I want you to be honest. Okay? Now, I want you to, to, to look at this. There is a significance here. Rhythm. Drum. Okay, let's stop that before everyone starts jamming. Um, I want, first of all, I want to ask you, what did you feel right now? Huh? Did, you, did it wake you up? Right? You feel sleepy a while ago. And right, I look at you, like, 
This is how powerful music is, my friend. Music is not an ordinary thing. We're talking about something that is really important. But I want you to notice, Therese Pimpanko actually said, there is something about this rhythm, there's something about this drum that makes your heart beat louder than your head. Did you know that he is actually sending a principle in our mind? He, what he, now this is played all over again throughout the Philippines and throughout the world. Our young people, especially Seventh-day Adventist young people, I look at you and you are singing with her. We are listening to this, but slowly, the Bible said, by beholding, we become changed. What he is saying is, there is something about this music that makes my heart louder than my principle, my mind, my brain, my head. Okay, but the Bible said the heart is deceitful above all things. Let's go back. Okay, let me give you a little side note here. And I want to warn some parents here, or maybe you have some little sisters or your brother. Let me give you a side note. Let's, let's insert this in the memory, memory card of your brain, okay? The rhythm and the drum. Let's go back later, okay, to that. But I want to focus to the heart, okay? Now, there's a, a quotation here. A while ago, we read this, Manfred Kleins, he said, Music, in fact, is an organization created to dictate feeling to the listener. The composer is an unrelenting what? Dictator. So music is dictating. Look at the music right now, the popular music that we have right now, and listen to the lyrics and look at what, what are the things that they're dictating our young people. I want you to notice this. This is a warning. This is majority of the song right now. Look at the lyrics. Always remember that music is a dictator. It dictates people. This is the music. I'm, I'm sorry to let you listen to this, but I'm presenting to you what the world is up to. Now, let me stop that. This is the music that our young people and even us sometimes are listening to. Follow your heart, follow your heart. And, the, and a scientist said that music is a what? It's a what? We read it a while ago. No, you're not listening. It's a what? It's a dictator. It, dic it dictates something. Now, majority of the music di dictates our young people, especially adults, to follow their heart. Now, there is a danger here, but there's more here. I want you to notice. Okay, I don't know if you watch Aladdin, but I want you to notice their music. Let me play that. I want you to notice the lyrics. I can show you the Shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? I can open your eyes, take you wonder by wonder, over sideways and under, on a magic carpet ride, a whole new world. Now, let me stop that. This is our young people are up to. Let me skip that. It's not important. But I want you to notice this. Another song. This is a song from Sonic, the game. They said that your heart is not going to lie to you. This is all over, all over becoming, it's in, being inserted in our minds of our young people. Follow your heart, follow your heart, follow your heart, follow your feelings. But then the Bible gave us an understanding, Jeremiah 17 verse 9, the heart is what? Deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know why I diverted a little bit from music to following your heart? Because there is a danger. Our music right now is dictating us to follow our heart. And our young people are listening to this. That's why, notice this, my friends. If you're a parent, 
You ask the kid to follow you, it will never follow you. Right now, it's hard for them to follow. So let them follow you because they're actually following their heart. Little they know, they are affected by the media. Are you following? I hope you are following. It goes on to say, let's read it all together. This might sting a little bit. It says, he that trusts in his own, own heart is a wise person. Is it what? Is a fool. The Bible actually calls you a fool if you're following your heart and not your principle. And, and follow this with me. Therese Pimpenko is actually telling your kids to follow your heart. The, the music that you're listening to right now is actually telling you to follow your heart, not follow God's word. That's why Kuya Matthew was actually giving you an understanding before, yesterday, that when, imagine if Noah followed his heart. Do you think we have a story of the Noah's Ark? No. If Jesus would have followed his heart in Gethsemane, do you think we have the story, Jesus and the cross? No. Because he followed God's word, not his heart. His heart was telling him, you know, don't go to the cross. But then God's word said, go. He went because of God's word, not because of his feelings and emotions. Very, very important. Now, let me go back to the rhythm and drums, okay? Now, he said a little bit to that. Now, this is the purpose why we have heavenly music. Child Guidance 5, 523. Music is often perverted to serve purposes of evil. And it does become one of the most alluring agencies of temptation. But rightly employed, this is the purpose of music, rightly employed, let's read it all together. It is a precious gift of God designed to uplift the thoughts to high and noble themes to inspire and what? Elevate the soul. So what's the purpose of music? It is to elevate the soul. But right now, my friends, our music is not elevating the soul, it is elevating the flesh. I'll prove to you that later on. But we have a music major here. I wanna ask if I'm right, I don't know if this is right. This is the basic order of music, the basic, okay? I'm not saying there's more. I mean, there's more, but, but this is the basic one. What do you think comes first? Of course, melody, right? Then it's followed by harmony. What do you think ha comes after? The rhythm. This is the basic mode or the basic order of music. Rhythm must not surpass, surpass melody. Um, rhythm must not surpass harmony. Rhythm must be down there and the, below, below them, on, on the background. Or else if rhythm is exemplified in our church hymnal, we will not be singing our hearts out and uplifting our thoughts to God. We will be dancing. Are you following? But Satan is destroying the order of music right now. What he is doing is not, he is not putting melody on top. He is putting rhythm on top. So instead of using it to on uplifting our spirit, he is using it in alluring us to fleshly desires. He's using it to move, the, not to move the spirit. He is using it to move the flesh. I want you to notice this. Let me give you an example on how it looks like. I want to prove to you that Satan right now is using music not to uplift your soul, soul, your thoughts. He's using it to uplift your fleshly desires. Using it to, not to move the spirit, but to move the body and the flesh. Please be honest. I want to ask you some question after this, okay? I want you to notice what you feel when you listen to this music, okay? Again, I'll be presenting to you what Satan is doing, okay? So please, pay attention. I want you to notice. Yeah, man, I see you over there, so hypnotic. Thinking about what I do to that body. I get you like, ooh, baby, baby, ooh, baby, baby. Oh, ooh, baby, baby, ooh, baby, baby. Got no drink in my hand, but I'm wasted. Getting drunk, all the thought of you naked. I get you like, ooh, baby, baby. <laughs> okay. What about this one? Simple one, simple beat, you know? Okay, let's stop that before everyone starts jamming. Um, what do you feel so far? 
first one, if you're not conscious about it, you feel like you want to have sex, the lyrics itself, yes, yeah. and also the message. Mm -hmm. And the other one, because um, mm -hmm. genre, yeah. if you get a little reggae, yeah. it will influence you to be uh, it's like a reggae people, right? Yeah. Rasta party and you want to dread up your hair, change yeah. your looks. Yeah, you see, there's something, music is not neutral, but I want you to notice your, in, in this, the aspect of your fleshly desires. Does it move something in you? Like, it does. It, it does. does, right? Yeah. So do you think that this is from God to uplift our thoughts? No, right? So, it, you know, I'm, I believe that when, when God gives you some music, it will not make you, you act as if like you're, you're part of the world, right? God said, love not the things of this world. If any man love the things of this world, the love of the Father is not in him. And he specifically emphasized the lust of the flesh, right? So our flesh must not move when God gives us the right music. But look at this. This is what our young people are up to. Now I want you to notice this. It says here, music in balance, Frank Garlock and Kurt Watson. He said, melody responds to the spirit, harmony responds to the mind, rhythm responds to the what? The body. You see, a while ago, rhythm was exemplified and you know what happened? Our body was moving because it is in contact with our body. The Bible said, Galatians 5.16, For the flesh lusteth against the, flesh, the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other. So flesh and spirit are contrary. So do you think the music that we have been listening to a while ago, do you think it's from the Holy Spirit? No, it's not, it's not from the Holy Spirit. It says, John 3.6-7, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that said unto thee, ye must be born again. But I want you to notice this. If you're born with the Spirit, you are moved by the what? Spirit, right? Because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. If you're moved by the Spirit, you are, uh, if you're born with the Spirit, you are moved by the Spirit. What if you're, move, you're born with the flesh? You are moved by the what? By carnal things, right? Flesh, right? Therefore, I want to make a very bold statement here. Therefore, anything that moves the flesh is not of spirit. Would you agree? Would you agree? Anything that moves your flesh a while ago, the feeling a while ago while you're listening to the worldly music, is not of what? Spirit. Okay? Now, I want you to hang on to that because I will be testing you on that later on. Now, I want you to notice this. Rhythm is the element most of music most closely allied to the what? Body movement, to physical action. Its simple patterns when repeated over and over can have an hypnotic effect on us. Do you believe that? Now, Carlos, you've been here, right? You've been in that situation. Do you think it's true? The, the statement there that it is mostly closely allied. You're not listening. <laughs> mostly closely allied to the body movement. Yeah, yeah rhythm. Yeah. Have you been in a disco house where there's no rhythm? No, no. It's impossible, right? You can't call it a bar house and a dance studio if there's no rhythm. The main reason why they are dancing because it is because of the rhythm. Okay? Now, there's more. The what of music? The sex sexuality of music is usually referred to in, to in terms of its what? Rhythm. It is the beat that commands a directly physical response. So the sexuality of music is referred to what? To what? To the rhythm. Okay, I'll prove to you that rhythm is not bad. Okay, rhythm is not bad at all. But when it is exemplified, Okay, exemplified, it refers to the fleshly desires, to come to your de fleshly desires. Who we here knows this guy? Everybody knows this guy, okay? He says this, when pop star Michael Jackson was asked why he made filthy sexual hand gestures on stage, he replied this. I don't know if you noticed Michael Jackson dancing. His hand is, you know, in on some not good area of his body, right? He was asked, Michael Jackson, why, are, why is your hand on your, the private part of your body? Why? He answered this, okay? It is the music that compels me to do it. You don't think about it. It just happens. I'm a slave to the rhythm. Because of the rhythm, 
it makes him dance sexually. That's how powerful music is. Let me give to you, okay, this is the, beat. I'm not saying this is the general kind of beat, but this, this is, I think, the, one of the most famous beat that all hip-hop, jazz, R&B, reggae used, okay? But not that, you know, very linked, but then this is similar to the music that, the beat that they're listening to. This is the beat that makes your flesh move, okay? I want you, this is the signature of it. I want you to notice this. I want you to feel. actually a 4-4 beat and a drum but then I want you to notice this is the basic beat of all hip-hop jazz and R&B this is the music that they're the drum beat that they're putting into their music that makes your body not you know your, your head nod and your flesh move and your 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 feet is is stomping are you following so far okay this is the music that they're actually are putting it now I want you to notice there's a, a song here, why should the devil have all the good music? They think the devil have the good music, all the good music, they think so? He said this, I ain't knocking the hymns, just give me a song that has a beat. I ain't knocking the hymns, just give me a song that moves my feet. You see, this is our generation today. They don't want to go to the AYF because they cannot dance. The main reason why we have so many things, like the beat now is coming into our church, to attract our young people. But then we are not called to call people in the church, we are called to bring people in the truth. Amen? Not in the church, but we are bringing them on the truth that Jesus gave us. Because when they have the truth, there's no else to go other than the church. Are you following? So Papco students, you're not called to bring people in the church. You're called to bring them in the truth. But then sometimes we are bringing all those entertainment in the church to allure the young people to come in. We are compromising in the name of baptism. But that's not good at all. It says here, I ain't knocking the hymns. Just give me a song that has a beat. I ain't knocking the hymns. Just, just give me a song that moves my feet. This is the situation today, my friends. Now, I want you to notice, I want you to notice, very important, rhythm is not bad. Amen. Okay? Rhythm, before we, we have our break, rhythm is not bad at all. Are you following so far? But when Ellen White said, Satan will use music as snare in the way in which it is what? It is conducted, not music itself. So rhythm itself is not bad. On the way it is conducted, it will be decided whether it's good or bad. Are you following? Who many here have heard about Amazing Grace? Let me prove to you that drums is not bad. Rhythm is not bad. Amazing Grace. Okay, I want you to notice, this is Amazing Grace. Okay, can you hear the drum? That's Amazing Grace. Was it good and, and conducted in the right way? Okay, no, of course, no way. What about this one? Okay, another one. Can you see the signature still? Okay, softly, but there's a signature that makes you move. Is that from the Holy Spirit? Is that from the Holy Spirit, everyone? Everyone, okay, no. I don't know if you noticed that. That's Amazing Grace. This is Amazing Grace again with drums. I want you to notice the drum. I want you to compare it to the pre previous Amazing Grace. Is it moving your flesh? Huh? Is it moving you like, like you're dancing? I want you to notice. No, 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 no. I want you to. Be, I want you to feel. Does it move you? Yes. No, it did not. It was used rightly used. Now you must discern it. Ellen White said, "Music rightly employed." 
he's not saying drums is evil at all. What she is saying is the way you use it. A while ago, we were listening to a military cadence. It's, it did not make you march. It didn't make you dance. It gives us a climatic effect. If you, if you listen to orchestra, my friends, they have drums, but it is not used to exemplify the music of the rhythm. It is used on the climatic background. Okay, I'll to entertain question later on, okay? But I want you to notice, are you following so far? Okay? It did not make us move our flesh like, okay, let me, let me continue, okay? Okay. Okay, can you dance in this? Now I want you to feel the same exact feeling of what you feel a while ago when Amazing Grace was, was rocking, rocking the, the house up. That's it. You know what I feel when I listen to this? I listen like... You know, I'm, you know this is climatic. It, this is this is how now you must discern because some people are too ex in extremes oh drums yeah. oh drums I don't want to use it drums no we must be balanced my friends that's why I'm delivering to you the right exact thing to put in your mind when you see drums it's not evil at all okay it's just the way you use it okay is that clear I hope that's clear as day because I want you to know always notice I think I should stop there because we have no more time. We'll have a 10-minute break, and I will entertain your questions. We'll see you in 10 minutes.